So what is idea to iPad? Well, as usual, we had a high participation rate with a wide range of entries. So what we do is we created a pool of submissions from these sessions combined with the previous requests. We group them into high level categories and tasks, and then we choose an idea from the most popular one to demo. But keep in mind, FileMaker will continue holding idea to iPad events in the future. So if your idea wasn't selected this time, just keep submitting them for use as a potential demo. And while your use case may differ, we'll still be covering some common techniques and features that you can apply to your solution. Now your requests were similar to the ones that you're seeing on your screen right now, but based on the popularity of your submissions, the winning entry is a meeting note solution. And you guys have been asking for this one for uh, quite some time. Now some common tasks for a meeting note solution may include capturing the meeting time and notes, assigning follow-up tasks, tracking documents and files, creating an attendee list, and so on. And we'll see some of those features today. Now. Keep in mind, today's demo will feature some advanced beginner techniques and methodology, but uh, you'll still you'll receive a link to this recording so you can follow along at your own pace. Now, before we start building this out, let's all assume that we're part of a management team in the sales organization for a nat national distributor. Now, our sales VP, well, let's go ahead and we'll choose someone from our attendee list. And um, okay, let's say uh, today, Jeff, Jeff is our sales VP. Now, Jeff knows our current meeting structure is a mess. We're constantly wasting too many cycles on disorganized meetings. We're suffering from scattered information and unaccountability. Jeff is just simply tired of meetings that just don't produce results. And that's when I get called into his office. Now, Jeff knows there has to be a more effective, more efficient way to facilitate this process. And Jeff wants the following. He wants a solution that aligns to our business needs. So that means it'll have the features and functionality unique, unique to our workflow to make our meetings more efficient. And since our management team is constantly traveling, Jeff wants to make sure that everyone has visibility of the data wherever they are. Now, today is just not a good day for me to start this project. It's late in the day on Friday, and I'm catching a flight out of, time for, out of town for the weekend in a few hours. But that's when I remember FileMaker. And the first thing I want to do is make sure I can create a solution with the features and functionality unique to our meeting workflow. So I'm going to create a brand new database and then use fields, tab controls, relationships, and portals to optimize our workflow. So let's go ahead and talk about how we can do that. Now, when we want to create a brand new database in FileMaker, there's a few different approaches and how we can get started. But what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to launch my FileMaker Pro Advanced. And then I'm going to go up to the file menu and select new database. Okay, let's give this a name. We'll call this um, my meetings. We'll put it on the desktop. That looks good. And FileMaker gives us a, a blank slate for us to create our custom solutions. And it also automatically puts us in what we call layout mode. And this mode is where we can design the look and feel of the layouts and add objects and fields and things like that. But I want to create a brand new layout. So I'm going to go up to the layouts menu and select new layout report. And uh, let's go ahead and give this uh, layout a name. I'm just going to distinguish that this is an iPad layout. And uh, we'll call this meeting details. And then we can choose what dimensions will this layout be built for. Is it going to be for uh, a, a desktop computer? Are we going to build a report, maybe some uh, labels? But you know, this is going to be for the iOS device. So we're going to choose iPad, iPad mini. It'll be a form view. And then we have the option, is it going to be for the portrait or landscape orientation? And uh, we'll just choose landscape orientation today. And I'll click finish. So FileMaker automatically gave us a layout designed to the dimensions of the iPad in a landscape orientation. And it also gave us a touch theme. Now there's 61 themes in FileMaker 13. They're fully customizable. And you'll notice that some of these are marked as touch. And if you look at the difference, enlightened to enlightened touch, sophisticated to sophisticated touch, the touch themes have the larger font and larger objects like you'd expect on an iOS device. So let's stick with the sophisticated touch theme and click OK. Now, again, we have a really good blank slate here. And we now we need to bring our information over onto our layout. Well, in FileMaker, information is stored in what we call fields. And brand new to 13, we have this fantastic tool called the Field Picker, which allows uh, creating fields and putting them on your layouts. It's much more efficient. And uh, what I can do is 
If I want to create a brand new field, I'm just going to click on this a new field button right here. Okay. And we can start off by creating a uh, unique ID for each of these uh, meetings. I want to make sure that uh, every record or every meeting uh, has its own ID. Um, by default, this is a text field, so I'm just going to go ahead and change that to number. And then I'm going to go ahead and control click or right click on Windows and select field options. And I want to make sure that every time a record is created, that this uh, field is automatically going to have uh, a serial number. Again, just um, reassuring that we're always going to have a unique uh, record. Okay, so let's keep building out. Um, we probably want to add a uh, title of the meeting, okay? And we'll change this uh, uh, field type back to text, all right? Uh, we probably want to capture the location or the meeting room. Um, we probably want a date. When is this uh, meeting going to be held? And I'm going to go ahead and change that field type to a date field. And then we'll add some uh, time fields, maybe a start time. We'll change that to a uh, time field type and then a uh, end time. And then finally, we probably want to add a uh, field for the agenda, just so we can quickly view um, what's on the docket for this meeting. And I'm going to change that back to a, a text field type. All right, pretty good start. Now, how do we get these fields over onto the layout? Well, it's as simple as a drag and drop. So I'm just going to go ahead and take a, a field and uh, you can select one at a time or I can use uh, the shift key, for example, to uh, grab a bunch of these fields. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop directly into my layout just like that, that easy. Let's go ahead and just uh, align these a little bit more, okay? And you'll notice these blue lines that appear, and that's what we call dynamic guides. And dynamic guides, they just uh, they just help you quickly align your objects and fields for uh, a more efficient developing. Okay, now by default, our uh, edit box fields have this uh, white background fill. It, it really stands out, but I want to mute this a little bit more. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and highlight all of these fields, and then I'm going to bring up the inspector tool. Okay, and you can access the inspector tool by clicking on this eye icon uh, in the formatting bar right here. Okay, now in FileMaker 13, this is brand new. Uh, FileMaker 13 introduced styles, and every object uh, and every field has uh, different types of um, uh, defaults or uh, customized uh, formatting, and, and you can make your own formatting as well. Okay, and you can see for the edit box, uh, we have a, a default and a minimal. A style that we can use uh, just right out of the box. I'm going to go ahead and select minimal edit box. That takes away all of the uh, white background and uh, the uh, lines around the uh, edit boxes as well. Okay, so I'm going to group these a little bit. I'm going to get rid of this label and I want uh, this title of the uh, of the uh, meeting to really uh, pop out. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. All right, um, we'll say 24 font is pretty good. All right, there's uh, quite a bit of padding here I want to get rid of, all right? So I'm going to go to the Appearance tab in Inspector, and I'm just going to lower that. Um, I'll just say like uh, two point for padding is good, and then I'm going to uh, make that centered a little bit more. Uh, let's let make this stand out a little bit more. I'm going to bold that, and then I'm going to, um, let's change the style to uppercase. All right, that's pretty good. And we'll make this just a little bit larger. Again, using those dynamic guides to help me quickly align. All right, then we'll move uh, these fields up a little bit. Okay, and uh, I'm just gonna add this line. Again, this is just my preference to uh, break this up a little bit. Um, break a little bit information about kind of like the metadata of the meeting uh, with like the agenda. Okay, and I'm gonna make this agenda label kind of look like this title field. So let's go ahead and make that a 24-point uh, font, uh, point font. We'll bold that. And then for the style, I'm going to go ahead and uh, make that uppercase as well. And hey, we'll use those um, dynamic guides to, again, help me quickly align what I want to do here. All right. And we'll just move this out and make this a little bit larger. All right. Pretty good start. Let's keep going. Let's customize this a little bit more. Let's uh, personalize this. Let's add some literal text to the layout. We'll call this uh, meeting details. And we'll make that title a little bit larger as well. Let's change that to um, 36 font looks good. Again, using my dynamic guides here. Um, then we have a company logo. You know, I want that to appear on every single uh, record. Again, just personalizing uh, this solution. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an image of uh, our company logo and I'm just going to drag and drop that right onto the layout, just like that. Okay. 
We'll move this on to the right hand side. Dynamic guides are guiding me. Pretty good start. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look at our changes. So I'm going to go ahead and exit layout. Okay, so exit this layout mode and that takes me to uh, browse mode and browse mode is where you can interact with and modify your data. All right, so I'm going to create a brand new record and uh, this meeting is going to be called uh, forecast review. Okay, uh, for the location, I'm going to say this is at uh, the uh, Liberty Room uh, in the second floor. And this could uh, certainly be a drop down menu or a pop up menu. I could create a value list that has all of the uh, meeting rooms. But uh, just for today's demo, uh, entering the information manually is fine. Um, the date and time, you know, let's go back to layout mode and let's format that a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, highlight the uh, date field. And I'm going to bring up the inspector again. And certainly we could uh, manually enter the date, but over on the data tab, let's change that from an edit box to a drop down calendar. Again, just make it a little bit more easier uh, for uh, our users. For the time, uh, still on the data tab, let's scroll down to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and select uh, hours, minutes. Uh, we can capture AM, PM on here as well. And we'll do the same thing for a time end. We'll do uh, our minutes. Okay, it looks pretty good. And uh, we'll exit that. Let's exit layout mode, go back to browse mode so we can uh, work with our data here. There we go. We have the drop down menu up here. We'll choose uh, October 15th. If we do time start, we'll do uh, it starts at 10. We get the 10 a.m. Uh, this is only going to be a 45 minute meeting. We'll do 1045. The a.m. appears there as well. And then for the agenda, we can. Um, Let's see, we want to talk about uh, Q1 review. We want to talk about uh, the Q2 territory changes. And then we want to talk about uh, the Q2 uh, forecast as well. All right, really good start to our solution. But again, we want to capture the notes of uh, each meeting and we want to assign some tasks and get some accountability in this solution. Now, there's a different approaches. Uh, we have some space over here on the right hand side, but probably not enough for both of the workflows. Uh, we could take a uh, we could create another layout and have uh, a button navigate to the appropriate workflow, depending on uh, uh, what we want to do. But let's go back into layout mode. There are some tools uh, that we can use that can take advantage of this real estate. And in particular, I'm going to use this uh, tab control tool. Okay, and a tab control is exactly what it sounds like. It's just a uh, tab. Uh, it allows you to put tabs directly onto the layout. Okay, so for example, we're going to have um, a uh, notes tab and then a uh, tasks tab. We'll create that and we'll uh, do a full justification here. Okay, so what happens is I can put different types of objects and fields directly onto. Uh, uh, a tab, and they're only viewable if you click on the appropriate tab. Now, what are we going to do about the notes themselves? Again, there's different approaches that we could do here. What I could do is uh, one way I could create a, a notes field. So I could uh, essentially just uh, keep adding and adding and adding to that same field. But, you know, if I want to do some searches on it, if I want to make it a little bit more dynamic, it's probably not the best approach. One thing I can do and one way that I'm going to uh, build it out now is uh, kind of have like a repository for the notes. So I'm going to create a brand new table uh, strictly for the notes and uh, relate that to uh, each of the meetings so I can view uh, which notes are attached to uh, which meetings. And that, again, allows me to be a little bit more dynamic with um, um, my, uh, my meetings and, and my note taking. So how do we do that? Well, first thing I'm going to do, we can't make any database schema changes aside from the fields in this field picker, but I'm going to go ahead and click on this manage database button. Okay. And there's different ways to get to this manage database window, but this is where you can uh, do additional things with your database schema on the back end of your file. So I can create uh, new tables. I can create fields associated to, associated to those tables. And then really the power of FileMaker, I can create relationships with those tables. And we'll see that in a second, but let's go ahead and, um, I'm going to rename this uh, table to just meetings. Uh, by default, the uh, the table in your file adopts the uh, name of your file. So I'm going to go ahead and just change that to meetings. And I'm going to add a, a new table called notes. We'll create that. And then let's add some fields to uh, the notes table. Just like we did with the meetings table, I want to make sure that each note or each record in that notes table has their own uh, unique number. So I'm going to go ahead and create a uh, notes ID field. All right, we'll change that field type to number. 
and uh, click on the options button. And again, uh, we want to make sure that every time a new record is created, a uh, serial number is generated for uh, that notes record, making sure that we always have a uh, unique value. Uh, then I need to create a uh, meeting ID field. And this is going to allow me to create a relationship with the meeting table. Okay. Um, and then uh, we want uh, a topic field. We'll make this a, a text field type. Okay. And we'll add a notes field. And then what if we wanted to capture some documents or files? I mean, that happens all the time in the meetings that we want to share that type of uh uh, information with each other. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new field called files. And this time I'm going to change the field type to a container field. Now a container field that stores all of the media. So it's going to have um, images, document files, PDF files, uh, movie files, sound files, all of that will be stored in a container field. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and create that container field. All right. Uh, now that we have our table for notes built out, let's go to the relationships tab. Again, here's the power of FileMaker relating information between uh, one or more tables. And when you want to create a relationship in FileMaker, it's as simple as finding fields with common values. Okay. And in this scenario, it's pretty straightforward. We want to make sure that uh, the meeting ID, uh, whenever that matches the meeting ID in notes, we share that information. And in order to create a relationship in FileMaker, it's just like what we've been doing this whole time. We're just dragging and dropping. So I'm going to click and hold that uh, meeting ID field, and I'm just going to drag and drop over to the meeting ID in the notes table. Just like that, we have a relationship. Again, we're saying whenever the uh, values in these uh, records match, allow me to share that information. I'm going to take that a step further by clicking on that relationship. And I'm just going to specify that I want to be able to create new records uh, in the notes uh, table via this relationship, which will allow me to uh, create uh, new records in a portal, which we'll see in a uh, second. Okay, really good start. Let's go ahead and click OK. All right. Now, how do I get that related information or those related notes onto this layout? Well, I just kind of gave you the answer. We're going to use what a feature that we call a portal. And a portal is just a view into another table's related record. So I'm going to go ahead and draw that right onto uh, the layout. Okay. And uh, the portal setup window asks us, okay, what related records do you want to show from? Which table do you want to pull related records from? Well, we created that table of notes. So we'll choose that. Okay. We'll show a vertical scroll bar. Um, we'll use an alternate row state. So the even and the odd number of rows have different colors. I'm just going to use two because I'm going to expand uh, these rows out a little bit and click OK. And then we can choose what fields do we want to uh, show from uh, the notes table. Well, we probably want to show uh, the topic, the notes for that topic, and then you know the option to have that uh, container field where we can store document files. But I'm going to go ahead and cancel that out. And the main reason is because I want to show you that, again, in that fantastic field picker tool, we can also choose uh, fields from other tables that are related or unrelated as well. So again, just making it a lot faster, a lot more efficient to uh, build your solutions. So I'm going to choose um, the notes uh, table here. Okay, we have a list of the fields from the notes table, but uh, let's go ahead and give us ourselves a little bit more space on this um, uh, portal. Okay, now let's start dragging that information over onto our portal. Uh, or onto our layout. So I'm going to take that uh, topic field, okay, and I'm just going to go ahead and drag that directly onto the layout. All right, and I'm just going to give this um, oops, a little colon there. Okay, we can make this just a little bit larger. And then let's go ahead and bring the notes field over. I don't need a label for that. I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop this field over here. Okay. And make this a little bit larger. All right. And then I'm going to take that container field, that files container field. And I'm going to drag and drop this onto our layout as well. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and resize that like so. All right. And it looks like we have a little bit more space. So let's just go ahead and move this up a little bit again, just take advantage of that real estate we have here in this portal row. Now, like uh, the fields on the left hand side, uh, the by default, these fields have the, uh, you know, the white background, they really stand out. Um, 
I don't want to remove it all. I just want to make it a little bit more muted so uh, our users know where to enter information. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, highlight both of these fields. I'm going to go back to the inspector tab uh, or inspector tool, uh, click on the appearance tab, and then uh, click on the fill. And I'm just going to change the opacity from 100% to uh, about 30% is good. As you can see, there's still kind of a coloring here on the... Uh, uh, the back end, but it's not as prominent as this white background. Uh, clicking on the container field, uh, let's go ahead and we're just going to choose a minimal container for that one. And um, I just want a, a little bit darker um, outline of the field, but that should be good. All right. So should we take a look at our changes? Let's go ahead and exit layout and go back into browse mode. All right. For the topic, I can uh, click in here and I can say, um, uh, we first talked about uh, the Q1 review, okay? Nice and organized like we uh, wanted it to be, uh, keeping us on track. Uh, we can start adding some notes, so notes of things that we talked about. Um, we had some really great uh, new customer growth. Um, existing customer retention was outstanding uh, this uh, quarter and uh, we completely hit uh, our plan uh, for the quarter as well. We did some overachieving there too. Now, what about this container field? What if we already had a report that we wanted to share to everyone attending this meeting? Well, we can do so just, again, a drag and drop. So I have this 2014 Q1 report, and I'm just going to drag that directly into uh, the container field. And just like that, uh, FileMaker stores that image or that file into the container field. And uh, if I just, uh, you know, right click this, we can, uh, you know, quickly uh, export that and open it up and, and take a look at that. Um, all the other, all the other people um, accessing uh, the file. Okay, so pretty good start with the notes, but now we want to start building out the tasks. Again, we want to start uh, making sure that we can uh, create new tasks and assign uh, owners to each of those tasks. Again, adding some uh, accountability uh, and using this tool. Now, in order to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, close this out, okay? And I'm gonna bring up uh, this new file, okay? And this is just in the interest of time. So what I've done is uh, pretty much the same type of uh, functionality that we did to create uh, this workflow for notes. It's the same thing that we're doing with the tasks, okay? So if I go to File Manage Database, Okay, what I've done is I've added a, a brand new tasks table and a brand new employees table, okay? And just like the notes, the way we created the notes table, right? Uh, we added some fields, we put some IDs in here as well to make sure that you know each task was unique and we had IDs that would allow us to create relationships with other tables. Uh, some fields that uh, for things that we wanna capture with the tasks. Uh, the employees table is pretty straightforward, just a bunch of contact information. I also added some uh, dummy records for our contacts as well. And then for our relationships, again, just like we did with the meeting and the notes, it's just a drag and drop meeting ID to meeting ID between the meetings and tasks, and then an employee ID to the employee ID for the task and employee list. Okay, so all of the techniques and methodology that we just learned, uh, we just applied for a new workflow for tasks and employees. So let's go ahead and we'll click OK. And let's take a look at what we did on the task tab, okay? Uh, similar to what we did with the notes, we created a brand new portal. We told FileMaker that we want to pull uh, uh, related records from the tasks table, okay? And then we just dragged and dropped a few, uh, a few fields right onto the portal, okay? So we have the tasks and the due date. Now, how do we assign an owner to each of these uh, tasks? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at the managed database again, okay? So I want to make sure that we're all on the same page in terms of this relationship, okay, between task and employee list. Right now we're telling FileMaker, hey, whenever the value in this employee ID field matches the value in the uh, employee ID field in the employee list table, let us share that information, right? So when we're in the task table, we need to make sure that we have an option to uh, enter or choose an ID that matches an ID in the employee list. Now we can manually enter that uh, information in the employee um, ID uh, field for tasks, but who's really going to remember the entire employee, uh, uh, your entire uh, employee um, list and, and their uh, matching IDs, right? Um, maybe if you have like five employees, but you're 
even like 50, 100, or a few hundred, uh, it's going to be uh, quite a headache. So let's let FileMaker do that work for us. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and walk to the tasks table. Okay, here's the uh, employee ID field uh, that we need to populate. All right, so I'm just going to drag that directly into uh, the portal. Okay, for that portal row. Now, I'm going to go ahead and change this uh, employee ID name to just uh, owner. Okay because that's essentially what we're doing here with this workflow. We're choosing an owner for this uh, task. All right, now talking about how we can let FileMaker do that work for us. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and bring up the inspector tool and I'm gonna change this from an edit box where we have to manually enter information into a dropdown list. And then I'm gonna use a value list to populate uh, the uh, different type of the employee list. Okay, so I'm going to create a new value list. Now, I don't want to hard code this information. Again, uh, keeping track of all the employees, especially if there's some turnover, that's going to be a headache. So I'm just going to tell FileMaker, hey, why don't you just go to that employees list table and let me use all the values there? So where do you want to use values from the first field? I'm going to choose the employees list table and I'm going to choose the values for uh, the employee ID. Okay, that's going to give me a, uh, a number value that's going to match up to the number value in the employees list table. All right. And uh, we're going to make it a little bit easier by showing a second field here. Okay. So not only will we get the, uh, the ID number, we'll also get the employee name next to it. Again, we're not going to memorize uh, everyone's employee ID. Okay. So we'll click OK. All right. Now, uh, one thing about uh, the value list, actually, let me jump back in here. Okay, the way that value lists work in FileMaker is that only the uh, first uh, field's value gets stored uh, in the back end. Okay, so we're not storing any names. All we're storing is the number, which is going to allow us to create that relationship between tasks and employees. So, given that, um, how do we show an employee name? Well, this is this is going to allow us to uh, create the relationship. And then we can just go to the uh, employees list table and pull the uh, employee field onto uh, the layout or into that portal. And uh, this is just going to automatically update to the um, uh, to the appropriate employee based off of the number that we choose. Okay, so we need to change the uh, opacity here a bit. So let's go back to the uh, inspector. All right, and appearance, we'll change this to uh, 30, make it look similar. Okay. And looks like I need to align this a little bit more. I'm just gonna use the uh, arrow keys. Perfect. Now we have um, the ability to enter the task, the due date, uh, who's gonna own this task. But what about the status? And there's a few ways that we could approach that. I mean, we could we have a uh, status field that we created, and uh, I could bring that over. I can turn it into a drop down menu where we could just choose, um, you know, a completed, in progress, overdue. Uh, we could certainly do that. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to make it a little bit more simpler for my users. I just want to have a checkbox uh, that uh, you know it says okay, it's completed or not. Again, everything's going to be touch driven on uh, the iOS, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and uh, just bring the status field over onto uh, the portal row, okay? And I'm gonna go ahead and uh, change this to a, a checkbox, all right? We'll create a brand new value list. Uh, we'll just call this completed. And uh, we're just gonna give it one value, uh, yes, and click okay. And click okay. Um, if you can see here on the uh, right hand side, the checkbox is pretty small, right? Uh, it kind of looks uh, out of place uh, with this large um, portal row. So what I'm actually going to do is let's make that font size a little bit larger. I'm going to make that 72 point, okay? And then I'm going to uh, realign this box. So really all we see here is the checkbox, okay? And uh, we don't need to see if um, like the text at all. I just want that ability to uh, uh, check or uncheck uh, if this task was uh, created. All right, so let's take a look at our changes. I'm going to go ahead and exit the layout. All right, we have our workflow here with the notes. We have our uh, tasks tab. All right, let's go ahead and enter a task. Um, 
let's see. Uh, we're going to get the uh, promo update from uh, marketing. Uh, we'll say the due date is 10-17-2014. Uh, um, here's our list, just like we expected. These are, these are the uh, the values from all of the uh, uh, employee um, the employees in the employee list table, right? So we can just say, uh, hey, it's Doris, all right? And we have the employee field automatically populate. And it's not just for Doris. Again, whoever we choose, if we choose uh, Annie, Arthur, uh, it's automatically going to update with uh, the appropriate uh, name, okay? Uh, we'll add another task. We'll say we need a new hire onboarding plan. Um, we'll say this is due the 20th. 2014, and we'll say this is uh, uh, given to Linda. And uh, let's just go ahead and add one more. We'll just say we need a uh, Asia Pack channel briefing, and we'll say a due date. Uh, it's going to be 10 18 2014, and the owner for that is uh, Denise. All right. And then uh, if we come back to uh, this meeting or this task, and we talk to uh, Carlo, and he says that yes, we got the update from marketing. Here it is. I can just quickly check that checkbox. And just like we expected, we can mark that off as completed. Again, just making everything a little bit more organized, having more accountability and a lot more efficient. So what did we do? Well, we created a brand new database. We created a new layout optimized for the iOS. And then we use features like fields, container fields, relationships, and portals to optimize our workflow. So I'm feeling pretty confident that we can meet Jeff's criteria and it looks like we should be out of the office well under an hour, but we still have a few more features and functionality to add. Wouldn't it be great if we could send meeting notes to all attendees at the end of our meeting? Well, to do so, I'm going to use FileMaker's email, scripting, and calculation features to automate that process. So let's talk about how we do that. Okay, so back in FileMaker Pro, okay, it'd be great that we could just send uh, our notes, uh, our meeting notes to all the attendees, make sure that we have a level of transparency, make sure we're all on the same page. Now I can manually do that. I can go to file, uh, send mail, all right? And I can manually enter all of the uh, email addresses, manually enter a subject and uh, you know, copy and paste the notes into uh, this message body and then send that. Now, that's pretty tedious and it's going to be, it's a repetitive process. And when you have a repetitive process, that's really uh, tedious in your solution that pretty much calls out for uh, the, the need for a script. And a script is really just a set of instructions that you define that allow you to automate those tedious and repetitive processes. So how do we create a script? Well, let's go up to the scripts menu and go to manage scripts. Okay. And I'm going to select new. And what you're looking at is the edit script window, all right? And here's a list of all of the preset script steps. It uh, cuts down to the amount of querying that you do. But what we'll do is you can just drag these over into this main window or double click them. And uh, again, you just fire off a list of instructions that will uh, automate the uh, processes for you. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and give this a name and we're just gonna call it uh, send uh, uh, meeting notes, pretty straightforward, okay? now. How's our script going to work? The first thing I want to do is make sure that FileMaker knows where I am. So I want to capture uh, which meeting I'm currently uh, looking at. Okay. Now we only have one meeting now. That's okay. But you know, as we add more and more meetings in the solution, you know, FileMaker is not going to know if okay you started your script on uh, meeting one or uh, meeting forty-five or meeting uh, two hundred sixty. So that value is going to change. It's very dynamic. And when you need to capture dynamic values, you can use this set variable script step. This is a very powerful script step. You're going to use it all the time in your scripts. So in order to set a variable, okay, I'm just going to uh, put a dollar sign uh, to indicate this is a variable and I'm going to call this uh, meeting ID. Okay. And then I need to give this a value. All right. So I'm just going to tell FileMaker, uh, grab whichever uh, meeting ID uh, is listed in uh, the current record, okay? In this case, it's just meeting ID one, all right? So now that once we have a uh, variable for the meeting ID, now we can move around the, uh, the layouts a bit, okay? Now there's a few different ways that we can capture the notes. Uh, we could uh, walk through uh, the portal and grab the different notes, but I'm gonna go through a, a different method where I'm gonna be uh, touching um, the, uh, 
actual notes table itself um, through uh, the, a notes layout. Okay, so I'm going to go to uh, the notes layout. Um, okay, so we'll choose uh, notes layout here. Okay, and then once I'm in the no notes layout, I need to make sure that uh, I'm working in a found set of a record specific to my meeting. Okay, so I'm going to create a brand new uh, find. Okay, and I want to say that hey. Uh, when I'm in the uh, notes layout, I want to make sure that you only retrieve records where the meeting ID matches the meeting ID in the uh, variable that we just created. Okay. So it's always going to ensure that we're looking at notes associated with our current meeting. Okay. Then once we found, uh, or we created a found set of uh, those notes, we're going to go ahead and jump to uh, the first record. Okay. Now, once we're at the first record, we need to capture uh, the actual notes section here. We can walk along um, what we're going to be doing uh, side by side, okay? So we jump to the first record. We need to capture, okay, uh, what's the topic and what's the notes in that current record, okay? And in order to do so, we're just going to create another uh, variable. Again, this is going to be dynamic information. It's going to be changing from record to record. So I'm just going to call this uh, notes. Again, I have the dollar sign to indicate that this is a, a variable, okay? And I want to tell FileMaker, populate this variable with uh, the value in the topic, and then add a return, and then add uh, the value in the notes field, okay? And this is FileMaker's calculation window. You're going to see it everywhere in the solution. All you're really looking at are fields associated to a table, operators, and then the list of preset calculation functions. And you combine all of these, you combine them with some literal text that uh, produce or to create different expressions that produce different results, okay? In this scenario, again, I'm just using the value in the topic, so that Q1 review, and then I want a uh, return, okay? So underneath that, I'll get the value in the notes field, okay? So I'll click OK. All right, so we captured the, uh, the uh, variable of the topic and notes in the first record, but now we need to continue working our way through the database, right? And that's going to change too. Maybe in one meeting you may have uh, 14 notes, and in the second meeting you may have only three notes. And again, since it's dynamic, we can't really hard code that into a script. So what we can do is have FileMaker just um, do that work for us. And I'm going to use this uh, loop script step to keep automating the process of going through next records grabbing the values, and then stopping when, there, when um, there's no more records to look at, okay? So I'm going to choose uh, loop, go to uh, the very next record, but I want you to exit this loop if, uh, if there's no more uh, records uh, that exist, okay? And then what we need to do is refresh that uh, notes variable, okay? Because we need to keep adding on uh, the information from the second record to the first, and then from the third record to the first two, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this set variable, we're going to refresh. We're going to call it uh, notes so that the notes variable refreshed. And I'm going to tell FileMaker, give me everything that you currently have in that notes variable. And then add another line. Okay, that's a return. And then um, add a, uh, another return. Okay, because I want to space in between. Okay, and then add the current records topic with a line and uh, the current records notes below that, okay? We're just layering all of the previous information um, on top of the uh, current uh, records information, okay? So FileMaker will continue to do that, okay? So click OK. So once we have all of the notes um, put together, then we need to capture all of the email addresses, okay? so. It's pretty much going to be the same type of workflow. I'm going to tell FileMaker, hey, go to the tasks layout. Okay. And then when you're at the tasks layout, perform a find for all of the tasks that match my current uh, meeting. Okay. So I'm going to say, uh, go to the uh, task layout. And uh, when the meeting ID equals the uh, that very first variable that we created, which captured the current meeting that we were looking at, okay? And then once we uh, perform, or once we get in a found set of all the tasks that match our meeting, uh, we're just gonna go back to the first record, okay? And then we're going to uh, set a variable for the email address. Again, that's gonna be dynamic uh, value for every record. 
So I'm just going to give that a name of um, dollar sign email. And then I'm going to tell FileMaker, uh, give me uh, the value in the uh, email address. Okay. And then again, the amount of attendees is going to fluctuate from meeting to meeting. So we're just going to have FileMaker. We can't hard code uh, how many times FileMaker needs to do this. So we're just going to have FileMaker loop uh, this process. Uh, until uh, there are no more um, uh, attendees or no more records that exist. So I'm going to tell FileMaker, uh, go to uh, the next record, all right, but exit after the last record, all right, exit that loop after the last record, and then we need to tell FileMaker to keep refreshing that uh, email variable, okay? So FileMaker, give me everything that you currently have in the email variable, and then add a return, and then add the uh, variable or the uh, value in the uh, email field. Okay. Now, why am I adding a return here instead of you know maybe uh, a literal text of uh, comma and space? Well, this return is not going to act like a uh, give me an, an additional line in uh, the to field for my email. This is actually going to commit the uh, current email address. Uh, otherwise, if you don't commit that uh, current email address, it's just not going to appear on uh, the FileMaker Go side. Okay, so we're going to have uh, FileMaker loop that and keep uh, uh, creating a list of uh, all of the email addresses throughout all the records. And then once we have that list, we're going to make sure that we jump back to uh, the original layout. Okay, that's going to take us back to uh, the iPad meetings um, layout. All right. And uh, then we need to make sure, again, that uh, we jump back to the appropriate uh, meeting. Okay. So, uh, FileMaker find the meeting ID that matches, uh, the meeting ID variable. Again, we only have one meeting here, so, uh, we wouldn't need to necessarily do that in this script, but we want to set ourselves up for success, uh, as we add more and more, uh, meetings to, uh, the solution. Okay. Now we captured all the notes. We captured all the emails. We're back on the original layout. Let's send that information out. I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. We have a send mail script step. Okay. And uh, again, we can hard code information in here. You can choose field data, although field data will just grab the uh, first, uh, uh, the current record uh, information. Um, but then we're going to use specify calculation and we're going to use the uh, email variable that we just created in the script. We're going to tell FileMaker, hey, everything that I just grabbed, go ahead and push that into that two uh, uh, section. Same thing with the message body. Okay, we could uh, uh, pull values from a field, um, uh, insert text from a file, but we already have what we want in the body. I'm going to tell FileMaker, hey, everything in that notes variable, go ahead and place it directly into uh, that body. And then for the subject, um, let's go ahead and create a calculation for that as well. All right. Um, we'll just uh, add some literal text, which is always uh, in uh, quotes. Okay, we'll say meeting notes. Um, and then I'll combine that with, uh, we'll go to the get functions. Get functions um, have, uh, they store, or, or they capture uh, current session data. So I'm gonna use the get current date function, okay? And this way I don't have to uh, manually type this out as well, okay? It's just gonna say meeting notes uh, with uh, today's date, all right? So let's go ahead and we'll click okay. And I'm gonna go ahead and save the script, all right? Uh, let's go back to layout mode and we're going to attach that script to this button that we just created. All right. So we're going to perform that script, send a meeting notes and click OK. All right. We'll exit that layout mode. All right. Looks like we have some notes here uh, for the different topics. We have, uh, we have three people here as well. So let's go ahead and click on our uh, email button. Okay, and just like that, the two section is populated with the emails like we expected. We have the calculation populate the meeting notes with the current date. And then we have all of the uh, notes from uh, today's meeting broken down by topic and the subsequent notes uh, below them. Again, just like we expected. So what do we do? Well, we use FileMaker's email, scripting, and calculation features to automate the process of sending meeting notes to all the attendees. 
And we're really on a roll right now. And the last thing we need to do is make sure we can get this onto an iPad. So I'm gonna upload this file to FileMaker Server and then connect to it with FileMaker Go. So let's go ahead and talk about how we do that. I'm gonna close this uh, email out, okay? And if I wanna get a file up to FileMaker Server, I'm just gonna go ahead and select Share and uh, select Upload to FileMaker Server, okay? Now, what is FileMaker Server? FileMaker Server is a uh, software. It's part of the FileMaker platform. It's strictly a hosting application, okay? So you build your databases with FileMaker Pro like we're doing right now, and then you host them with FileMaker Server. It's kind of like you're managing your own cloud. Uh, and it runs the services in the background of your machine. So right now I'm uh, uploading this database we created to uh, FileMaker Server. Okay, I'm gonna click Upload and click Done. Kind of looks like we were in that database that we just created, but if you take a look uh, at the top of the screen, in parentheses, it says Ryan Minook's FileMaker Server. Okay, so we're accessing a file that's currently hosted by FileMaker Server. But how do I get this onto an iPad? Well, in order to show you, I'm gonna go ahead and launch this Reflector app, which allows me to AirPlay the um, iPad Air I have in my hands right now over to the screen. So give me one second to do that. Okay, and I'm selecting my computer right now. And there's the uh, iPad Air, okay? And down at uh, the bottom, you'll see FileMaker Go. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on that. All right, and this is FileMaker Go 13, free to download off the App Store. Uh, right now you can see the recent servers and files that I've accessed. If I tap on device, this shows the uh, solution stored locally on this iPad Air. It's a great um, alternative when you're in an area with a bad network connection or no network connection at all. I can continue to update information offline and then push those changes to the hosted uh, machine when I have a, uh, a network connection. And then if I tap on the hosts icon, this allows me to access um, local and uh, external um, servers hosting FileMaker uh, files. I'm going to go ahead and scroll through this list and uh, you'll see Ryan Minook's FileMaker server about the top. So I'll go ahead and tap on that. Okay. And uh, you'll see uh, my meetings underscore two down at the bottom. So I'll tap on that. Okay. And let's go ahead and uh, turn this into landscape mode, just like we uh, uh, built this for. All right. And just like we saw with uh, FileMaker uh, Pro, all right, uh, everything that, uh, you know, we, we built uh, translates right over to uh, the iOS. Uh, there's some changes, like with the date, we have the iOS um, uh, date wheel. Same thing with uh, the time wheel as well, like you would expect. Uh, we can update notes if we want. Um, for uh, here, territory changes. For the container field on the iOS, we can choose images from our library, files from our library, or we can leverage the iOS's camera and take images directly into uh, the container field. So for example, if I tap on camera at the top, you'll see we have a picture of the whiteboard. I'm just gonna go ahead and click on that, use photo. And uh, we have a whiteboard of image of uh, all the territory changes um, which match our notes. Okay, you know, we, we're doing whiteboarding all the time in, in our meetings. Uh, same thing with tasks, like just like we'd expect, we have that value list where we can change um, uh, owners and uh, we can just tap uh, whether or not uh, tasks are completed again, just like we expected. And of course, if I tap on that uh, email button, just like we saw with FileMaker Pro, we have the email auto-populate with all the calculations uh, and scripting that um, uh, we configured. So what did we do? I mean, really, that was just two things. We hosted with FileMaker Server and then connected to it with FileMaker Go. I mean, once the solution was created, it took maybe a minute without me talking to set this file up for access for Mac, Windows, iOS, or a web browser. Now, because we've introduced an organized approach to our meetings and started solving some of the problems caused by our scattered information and unaccountability, we're operating at a much more efficient level and focusing our time on more productive activities. Everything transparent and we can access this data wherever we join the meeting, wherever our business takes us. Now that was a fantastic idea uh, submission and let's go ahead and we'll open this up to uh, Q&A. Looks like we have a really great queue of questions already. If you haven't already, you can go to the control panel, click on the question section, click on send and uh, in the meantime, to give some of you who have who have not in, entered a question yet, uh, let's go ahead and talk about some uh, great next steps on what you can do after this webinar.
Okay. So, uh, FileMaker recently released the FileMaker training series. It's, uh, uh, there's two different books, uh, basics and advanced. This is the official training curriculum of FileMaker basics. You can download it for free on the uh, FileMaker website, or you can download it for free on iBooks. Advanced is $19.99 on iBooks. And this is a really great uh, resources to build up your foundational knowledge of FileMaker, you know, building your first relationship, building your first portal, learning about scripting and uh, uh, building your first report. And what's great, it takes you through uh, different activities as you learn, uh, kind of building out a database, kind of like what we did today. If you haven't already, you can download FileMaker Go 13 for free on the App Store. Uh, make sure that uh, if you do so, also download the FileMaker Pro 13 trial, which you can download off of FileMaker's website. As you saw today, all of the database schema changes and layout changes that happens on the desktop application side. So you want to make sure you build your solution first with FileMaker Pro, and then you can connect to it with FileMaker Go. One great resource that's not listed here is the free FileMaker forums. You can ask as many questions as you want. It's free to join. You can start as many conversations and threads as you want. You interact with a highly active uh, developer community of all levels, and it's moderated by FileMaker as well. It's a really great resource when once you build up a general knowledge of FileMaker, when you want to start learning like things unique to your workflow or features unique, unique to your workflow, it's a great uh, resource to kind of bounce off ideas and kind of um, uh, work with people to kind of get over a development hump uh, if you uh, meet one. And then if you're ready to, uh, if you're ready to uh, talk licensing and, and really, why wouldn't you be? You got uh, give us a call at 1-800-725-2747. Uh, we have a fantastic annual volume license agreement right now with FileMaker Pro as low as $9 and FileMaker Server as low as $29. Again, give us a call 1-800-725-2747. We'd love to chat with you and uh, talk about how FileMaker can uh, meet your needs. All right, let's go ahead and uh, well now I'll open this up to uh, Q and A. Just give me one moment to um, set up my uh, view here for uh, the questions. Okay. Okay. So the first question to uh, start us off uh, is a level of security. Can you make it so people using the mobile version can only read or look up data? You absolutely can in FileMaker. Um, the the security within the files you can create accounts or who can log into your file and then privilege sets or what can they do once they log in your file and it's within these privilege sets where you can specify what users can and can't do down to the very uh, field level the record level uh, the layouts whether they can uh, print uh, uh, export to Excel uh, all those type of things you can do so uh, that's where you can specify. Um, whether uh, people can view a certain sets of data or certain layouts or things like that. Uh, the next question, um, do we have to do anything different for the databases to work on Windows? Uh, all like the, the functionality that you saw me build, like the portals, the, um, the relationships, uh, you know, na naming the fields and things like that, you don't have to change anything. Uh, it's as close to high fidelity as possible. That there's some uh, minor cosmetic changes, like um, a font may uh, render like a, a pixel or two different on a Windows than it would on a Mac. So if you're going to be building in a mixed environment, just make sure that you you always you know double check your work uh, frequently to make sure um, you know it uh, it uh, uh, the interface looks uh, looks great on both uh, environments. Um, okay, uh, the next question, what are the ways I can get my uh, FileMaker solution onto uh, my iPad? Uh, there's a few different ways. You can, um, you can uh, use iTunes. You can email yourself the uh, solution. You can use a third-party solution like uh, Dropbox to bring it over to the iPad. And uh, you can also um, uh, put it up on a website and uh, download it. Okay. Uh, if you want to rewatch this session, it will be posted to the filemaker.com forward slash support forward slash webinars page. And you're also going to receive a link to the recording in about a day or so. So you can rewatch and uh, follow along at uh, your own pace. Okay. So that's all the time that we have today. Um, on behalf of FileMaker, it was my absolute pleasure to chat with you guys. And I hope to see you on another Idea to iPad webinar soon.